Hey guys, so I uh, picked up a Unimat, a uh, little mini lathe. Uh, I mean, actually this thing's like a micro lathe. This is, and this is my hand here, and it's only like a three inch swing and maybe six, uh, maybe seven inches max uh, between centers. I mean, it's tiny. Well, it comes with a 90 watt universal motor, and it's, the first thing when you're using one of these is you'll find out that this motor is very underpowered. It also has a duty cycle of 80%, so it recommends if you run it hard for eight minutes, you gotta let it cool down for two minutes. Uh, they, there are models that come with the gray plastic motor, the U100 motor, and it's got like an orange little slide switch up here. That's the only continuous duty official Unimat motor uh, that they made because it actually has a built-in fan to keep it cool. But after running one of these things for a while, you'll realize that this motor gets extremely hot. Um, one of the upgrades I've seen a lot of people do is they switch over, they change the motors out. And a very popular one is a uh, 150 watt permanent magnet DC motor. And essentially this is like a little scooter motor. This is actually um, like a Razor 100 uh, scooter. They use a 100 watt, but it's a very similar form factor. So I bought this on eBay, this is the model. It's a very common model number, ZY6812. And I think this GR maybe mean, it's got this, uh, the gear shaft, but it's actually a D-shaped uh, shaft right there. So we'll pull the gear off and we can put another pulley on it and set the set screw towards that flat. But we're already looking at, you know, over 50% more power on this. And plus with it being a permanent magnet DC motor, it's a little bit easier to control with a, um, a uh, pulse width modulated controller. So let me show you some of the extra stuff I bought, not just because, not just this motor. All right, besides the motor, um, well, it's 24 volts, so you at least need, just to even get it to turn on, you need a 24 volt power supply. So I've got this 400 watt, um, 24 volt power supply, switch mode power supply, and it converts, you got two terminals here that generate, or is your line voltage um, where you can input 110 or 220 you can actually there's a little switch right there where you can select which what your input voltage is ac and it converts it over to 24 volts dc and the output has three sets of terminals each so i went with a 400 watt uh, versus like a bare minimum 150 200 because maybe later on i will add another smaller dc motor to maybe do like almost like a little power feed um, so that way I've got extra water for that. And also it's always kind of good to go a little bit over, uh, with your ratings, uh, because some of this stuff made in China is not exactly made to the greatest tolerances. And what I've found out is if you get something overrated for the project, it's more likely to last longer. So that's what this is. I think this was maybe, um, 25 bucks ish. Uh, motor is probably about the same or maybe like 30. And I'll put links for everything I bought uh, below. Uh, this is a four, or I'm sorry, this, uh, it says, I think they said it was a 2000 watt pulse width modulated uh, motor controller. And the reason I went with this one is because they make smaller ones in a box. Again, I want to overbuild this. This one has MOSFETs, switching MOSFETs with individual heat sinks on it. It just looked better built. And it also had a reverse uh, signal feature where you can run it forwards, you can re reverse, and then also has a uh, middle section here that actually acts as a brake where it shorts out a DC motor. When you short out a DC motor, it instantaneously uh, breaks. Um, the switch here, it's a simple potentiometer, but it actually has an on signal. You can hear that click, and you can turn it on, and the on signal is separated uh, from the potentiometer uh, circuit so if you wanted to add just an actual separate on off switch and keep your speed setting you can do that if you wanted to but it converts uh 24 volt dc in to 24 dc out pulse width modulated and so the instead of simply changing your motor power from 0 to 24 volts you actually get a 24 volt square wave and if you want to go half the speed it's a square wave where you have 50% of the time it's high at 24 volts, 50% of the time it's low at zero volts. 
and that's a 50% duty cycle, which means you're getting essentially half the power, or I'm sorry, half the uh, half the speed, but because your amplitude is staying close to 24 volts, you keep the majority of your torque. And so that's one of the benefits of running pulse width modulated versus a simple uh, linear uh, voltage modifier. Um, I didn't want to modify the existing pulley, so I got a 31 millimeter diameter pulley here. This one actually has a six millimeter board, just like the motor that's on the lathe right now, but the motor, the DC motor I have is an eight millimeter, which I, I could have found a 31 millimeter with an eight millimeter board, but the problem was there was none currently available to be shipped out. And so I said, well, I'll just get this and I'll drill it out to eight millimeters. And in case I need it, I bought a set of little reamers. This is an eight millimeter reamer that I can use to make that shaft um, bore a little bit more smoother and the only other thing you really need is just some extra wire like a plug to uh, connect to your um, power supply you need a wire from the power supply to your uh, speed controller and then you need wires coming out um, to connect to the motor now about these connectors the motor did come with this connector but this is like a standard uh, connector uh, for any kind of scooter you can buy those I had an extra razor scooter controller connector and I have all the individual terminals here and so I kind of just made my own little pigtail but you can find that um, they're all over Amazon and eBay these little I guess you, you probably just buy this right here as a pigtail first thing we're, we're going to do uh, since we got all this stuff we're going to bench test everything because um, I just got this in I want to make sure everything works before I start, you know, tearing it apart. Because if you start tearing stuff apart, like ripping this gear pulley off, and you know, if this motor don't work, then uh, well, you know, the company may not let you return it or swap it out. So I'm going to wire everything up, show you how it's wired, and I'll we'll do a little test run on it. All right, so one thing I want to do here is uh, I got power connected to it and I have a switched outlet here just to test the power supply before we connect anything else. And I want to make sure I got 24 volts coming out of this. If it's not exactly 24 volts, you can tweak it. There's a little bitty screw, um, see where my finger is on that little white thing, uh, that you can use to uh, modify the voltage signal about plus or minus, I think it's about a volt. But anyway, I'm gonna turn it on. You'll see a light come on here. Right there's the LED, you'll hear the fan come on, and we're just gonna to touch two of the output voltage terminals here. And why am I getting an overload? I am on AC, that's why. All right, we'll go to voltage. 24 volts on the dot, can you see that? Perfect. All right, we'll turn this off. And again, anytime this is on or plugged in, be mindful of this because it's a full line voltage. Make sure that cover's always down when you're uh, in use and powered on. All right, um, so so far right now, I got the power supply connected to the speed controller. I got power going to it. I got my voltmeter connected to the output. And right now, I just want to test to see um, if we're getting power coming out of it. So turn this unit on. This, you have to select forward or reverse. So we'll click just one way. And we'll turn this on. You hear your fan kick on a little higher. All right, so we got 24 volts. That should be negative. Yeah, it's showing up negative. 
Um, I think you have to have maybe a load on here for this to show the possibly the voltage change. But uh, we'll connect the motor next. All right, got everything connected here. Uh, this long wire here is connected to the motor. And hopefully you can see that. I got these switched. Well, first of all, I got to turn my power supply on. So it's on, got power here. I hit one of these directional switches here. We'll go one way. All right, you see it turning, it is turning. Counterclockwise, if you're looking at this through this direction, let's see, we're going real. Let me see if I can zoom in. Let me turn this back on. All right, counterclockwise, we're going super fast. You hear the fan kick on. Now let me show you what happens when you hit the. Uh, this right here. This is the selector switch. This is the brake. When I say it shorts out and stops, it's instantaneous. Watch. And we'll. So now I think we're, did I switch the other way? All right, we're still going counterclockwise. We're going to stop it. And now we're going clockwise this way. Full speed. All right, so everything works out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this, uh, this gear off here uh, and get that shaft freed up. I think there's a lot of, they put glue on it. We're going to remove this little, uh, little clip right here and like I said I think there's glue on it so we may have to heat it up and use a puller to get that off all right so I got my motor up in the uh, this old chain pipe vise here it looks I wrap some paper towels around it to keep it from getting marred up and it's not terribly tight but just enough to keep it in place we'll grab a pick here and see if we can pull this clip out of the way just break it yeah, and I think there's probably some glue in here. Is this metal? Um, all right, these little pullers right here the, didn't have enough clearance to get those hooks around it. So we are uh, switching over to this style. This kind of like beam puller here. This is a 19, late 30s, early 40s plum uh, puller here. And it's, it grabs a little bit around a little better. We'll see if we can get this out without having to heat it up. Um, if you don't have a puller, you can probably rent one at an auto parts store or uh, I think I've seen some guys, maybe I saw them put it somehow on a lathe to cut that out. Uh, maybe, we'll try to get this out of here. We'll try a little heat, see if we can soften up that gear. I got a map gas, but the only thing I got here, so uh, I'm gonna try to keep the heat as far away from the bearings as much as I can. things nasty smelling oh yeah coming right off now yep there we go all right pretty much got the shaft all cleaned up uh just pretty much took a little razor blade and kind of scraped the real hard stuff on there especially in this flat area um kicked it out and then just took a little bit of steel wool and I uh, polished it up so there's that next stop uh, modifying that pulley with a six millimeter bore to uh, to fit this all right I got my pulley chucked up in the uh, three jaw I'm grabbing it right there at the edge of the uh, little hub right now I'm gonna start out with a what I got here quarter inch bit and I think I'll move up to a 5 16 and after the 5 16 I think I'll chuck that uh, eight millimeter ring rent and that should be good to go
Alright, I think we're going to switch over here to the milling mode because this little chuck will not help hold a 5 16 and it definitely won't hold that 8 millimeter reamer. Uh, I want to get a bigger chuck for this. It's very small. So let's try this uh, this way. All right, so now I got the reamer hooked up. I took the belt off the top pulley here, and I think I'm just gonna do this by hand. Uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, so after unchecking it, all it is that I took a hand uh, countersink little um, chamfer here and did uh, get rid of all the burrs, and this thing it fits on there like a glove. There's like no play whatsoever. Yeah, so those, uh, <clears throat> using that reamer probably helped out a, a bunch instead of trying to drill it. All right, so uh, I had a little bit of wobble on this. I think when I uh, bored it out and uh, reamed it, I was a little bit non concentric on it. So what I did is I made a quick little mandrel here, um, put this on here and the inside of it's thread and tapped where you can put a little screw to clamp it here and I just screwed up all the faces to make it more uh, concentric so I think I'm good on that now. Alright now that we got the pulley situation taken care of all the electronics uh, it's time to take this off and figure out how we're going to mount this thing. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, we'll just go ahead and get the factory uh, motor off. Uh, to get access to the bracket bolts you got to get this pulley off Use a slotted screwdriver, take the screw out. It should pull right out. And then we'll do the bottom one first. We'll do the top one and we'll keep pressure on it until we get it screw all the way out. Right, there we go. Now I've already pre-measured um, the bolt circle. There's three bolts um, that attach here and it actually has the same M5 by 0.08 thread uh, that the factory Unimat screws are using. The only problem is we got them 120 degrees apart and this one's 180 degrees apart. I measure this one I'm also getting about a 42 millimeter bolt circle the same size we just don't have that opposite one to, uh, to fit on. And the good thing about choosing this 31 millimeter pulley, and the reason I did a 31 is because it's the same as the middle size. This motor is a little bit slower RPM, and I usually run the motor uh, in the smallest pulley slot, so by going to a larger pulley, it should get it closer to the normal Unimat motor speed. All right, I think what I'm gonna do um, to see how we wanna put this extra screw hole in here um, I'm going to take this all apart. So there's two Phillips in the back here. And you got these um, long bolts here holding it together. All right, pull that out. Now, we only want to remove this cap. We don't want to pull the armature with it because there's on this one, the brushes are down here, and if you pull the armature up, uh, the DC magnets inside the wall can actually pull the uh, armature back at it and end up breaking your brushes. So what you want to do is kind of just lift the disc and push down on the uh, armature shaft here. And what you're doing is you're fighting against the, the bearing seat or race or whatever you want to call it. And it's not that hard of a press fit, but here we go. So I've seen multiple ways of people doing this. Um, I've seen, uh, obviously you can do an adapter plate where you put a plate over it and connect that plate to these three holes. And then on the other, um, then you drill and tap into the plate itself, uh, two holes to match uh, this bolt pattern. Uh, what I've seen a lot, uh, some other people do 
is they drill it 180 degrees out here and see this little gap there's not much reinforcement there so I've seen them cut uh, essentially like a reinforcement bushing uh, to do that another method that would be possible but I haven't seen anybody do it um, if you've ever used aluminum brazing rod that melts it like I think it's 700 degrees Fahrenheit um, you can braise a spot here opposite of the one where you want to drill it and it would build up the material here and those, those uh, aluminum brazer rods are actually relatively uh, tough compared to the base metal uh, but one thing I'm doing I'm looking at this there's a reinforcement here that um, let me get my calipers I'm gonna set this to 42 millimeters here close enough So there's a reinforcement right there. I want to see if I can drill into this part and if it'll be enough meat to, to hold that bolt in place. If not, we can always add a little bit more material, like I said, using that aluminum brazen rod, um, which I already have some. Uh, one thing I've noticed, and I saw this in the picture of the part I had to look back and see, there's already like a little dimple here that matches with this hole. Um, of course we're going to be probably making one a little bit farther inward um, but without even taking you, you if these are all the same where they have this little dimple here then you won't have to uh, take this piece off uh, when you're doing a little pre mark here so I'm gonna put it back together all right so I got my pulley in here and it's just gonna help me kind of center everything up a little bit I'm gonna take one of the factory screws here and I'm gonna put it in the hole opposite of the dimple and I'm going to do it up here at the top all right we'll take a look at that alignment all right so the way I'm going to align this is I'm going to try to center that pulley and there it is a little bit off a little bit but I can see that dimple and I'm going to try to center that as best I can and of course the, uh, the pulley won't be that recessed in there I'm just using it to center it um, I got a 13 I think this is a 13 uh, transfer punch and we're just going to put that in there to mark our new hole Make sure it's nice and straight. That's about the biggest size I can get in that hole. All right, we got a mark. So I'm going to take it all back apart, take this plate off. We'll take it to the drill press and we'll drill and tap that, uh, that bolt hole and see how it looks. Now I'm switching over to a 5 30 seconds drill for the uh, the tap. Uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier, there's little nubs right here uh, that kind of make this rock. So I have a couple of holes here on my drill press table uh, that I kind of get in there so that way it sits flat. So make sure you do the same. As you can see there's a little bit of meat there I mean you're looking at um, maybe 60% so I think I'm I'm just gonna tap that and I think we'll call that done again this is a m5 times 0.8 thread Straight that way, that way, I think we're good. And we can just do the rest by hand. 
hand. We'll back this out. And we'll try one of the factory bolts just to make sure that we get the double check or thread in. Yeah, it's fitting. All right, so I'm going to put the motor back and we'll see how this thing fits on there. All right, got it on there. Uh, bolts went in real smooth. Uh, tightened them up really uh, pretty snug hand tight so the threads are keeping the you know obviously the clamping force is all there because if it was ever going to break the clamping force i think the screw would have stripped out and it is it's on there pretty rock solid all right so uh i think i got the pulley lined up i'm gonna have to go through and uh kind of mess around with which ones to use uh if i had to do this over again i would have gone with a triple step pulley that way i could have varied it and also going with the correct bore uh, if it was available all right, one thing I want to show you guys is the uh, variable speed here. Let me back this out. Got a little bit of belt noise just because I haven't trimmed up the belt seams much, but Let's see. I mean, you can get this thing down to a crawl. Now there'll be hardly any torque at this, but let's do that quick break. All right, I think I got it set up to the speed I like and uh, also did a little bit of adjustments to the belts here. Uh, one of the belt was a little bit too long, so it was slipping. And we'll see what this speed is. Yeah, about 20, 2100 RPMs. So let's do a, uh, a few passes here. Um, Again, this isn't bolted down, so we're probably going to get a little bit of chatter here. All right, we're going to touch off. And I think we're going to go ahead and try probably a half a mil depth of cut here. is uh, pretty good. We'll try maybe 0 0.75. I got a lot of chatter here. maybe point six all right well um i think the biggest issue now is just rigidity on this thing uh, again this is it's a uh, not bolted down so um, you know if I get maybe bolted down I could probably maybe I'll do a full mill uh, depth of cut on this but I can already tell a big difference the motors not bogging down I've been actually turning on this for a while and this this motor is it's barely warm now so um, definitely a big upgrade probably one of the best bangs for the buck considering uh, the u100 motor the, the continuous duty that thing's over like 150 200 on ebay or what some people are asking for and this whole setup probably right around 50 bucks i'm gonna have to mess around with these pulleys again to see which uh one i really like and also you need to build an enclosure uh for all your electronics i'm not gonna show that on this because there's many ways to do it you can do it in a wood box uh you can do acrylic box i see metal boxes make sure there's air vents because the switch mode power supply needs to vent so uh I don't know if I don't do any more Unimat videos, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one. And uh, let me know what you think about it. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks, guys.